I grew up in a very traumatized home where my father was an alcoholic and when I finished my high school I ran away from my house and I, I lived like a tramp in the street for many months. I don't remember how long. And the later stage I became a Christian. And when I became a Christian, first thought came in my heart is that there are hundreds of people like me who are lost, not necessarily they are evil. They just lost uh, their purpose of life and, and uh, just wandering and I wanted to help them. But it was during my nursing days that um, I became a committed Christian um, with a group of nurses in Plymouth in Devon. And I think from then on I could see things completely differently. So I decided to work with the people who have alcohol and drug problems. So I worked for many years with people like that and um, that led me to come to Goa. And I started driving the aid trucks in and out of Romania, Albania and Bosnia. And I used to go to Poland to bring Bibles back from the printers on a back run. And I did that for about 10 years and I was, I was really, really trusting in the Lord on every single one of those journeys because some of them were scary. After a while, I happened to go to slums once. And when I went to slums, it really changed my life. I felt like they are really crying, you know, for help. And a lot of wrong things they do is not because they wanted to do because they didn't know how to do right. Mm. So I started going to the slums regularly, meeting them, talking to them. Those days I had no money. But from there, my daughter said I needed a holiday. And that was when she brought me to India. Before Anita came, before Anita came, one day morning I was praying and yes. I, uh, I got a scripture from the Bible that said that people of Tarshish will come and help you. People of Tarshish will come and lay their treasure at your feet. And uh, so I felt strongly like, you know, God is speaking to me. Yeah. So I didn't know what did Tarshish stand for. So I asked somebody and they said, Tarshish stands for England, it seems. <laughs> and uh, we arrive in Goa. And uh, we arrived in Candelim and we went to the hotel. And the first thing I did was look out of the window and I saw these little children, half naked, eating the food out of the dustbins. And they were thin and they had skin infections. And I just wanted to go and love them. I just wanted to hug them. And I didn't know how to handle this situation at all. Mm. I used to, in the morning, have my quiet time and my prayer time walking towards the beach when it was just getting light. It was a beautiful time. It was about the third morning, third or fourth morning, I think it was a Thursday. Um, I had this vision, I was just praying and suddenly I felt really peaceful, very peaceful. And I saw what seemed like a football pitch in front of me with all the players as children's homes and schools, like the goalposts were schools and children. And I felt that God was telling me to open homes for these street children. Now, I know I'm very fair skinned and I, sunshine does give me sunstroke, but I, th and I thought something's happening. So I thought, Lord, I'm going to ask you three things. The first thing is, if it's from you, you're going to give me the strength to do it. Because in 1996, I was 50 years old and I was going to retire and see the world. I said, I want to make sure it really is from you. Secondly, I want you to bring the right people to help me because I don't know anyone in India and I don't think I could manage without some local person. And finally, I became the good old doubting Thomas and I said, I want a confirmation. I want to know it is from you. Having done all that, I went back to the hotel. I saw to my daughter, I didn't say anything to her. I was sort of trembling underneath. Went on the beach and I went into a beach shack to get a, a lemonade. 
and there was a young man there, he hadn't got any, any customers, and he was reading an NIV study Bible in English the same as mine. And I said, are you a Christian? And he said, oh yes, he said, we, we're believers here. And we got talking. I didn't share the vision, and I said, you know, about church. He said, look, I'll come and take you to church on Sunday. One, of the, one boy who used to come to a prayer meeting, he was working in a beach shack. So he came and told me that he met one English lady, she's interested to let's see what we are doing, she wanted to come to our church. I said, okay. And he came up on this battered old motorbike that he'd borrowed, held together with string and wire and sellotape, to take me to Matthew's church. And of course, my daughter said, Mommy, you're not getting on a bike with an Indian. You know, no helmet. And, and where, where are you going? And I was saying goodbye. And the pastor and the worship team made me very welcome. And then just at the end, the pastor said, we don't often have a foreigner here. Come and say something to my congregation. So I stood up and I shared this vision. And then I looked at Matthew and there was tears in his eyes. And he said God had given him this vision two years before that he'd be sending someone from England to help him. And I said, right, well, we'll do it. So I told her that, uh, why don't you come and see what we are doing? Then another came with me to Islam. Uh, she was very keen, she wanted to help us and all. The very first day, yeah. he took me into this slum. We went up there and all the children obviously knew him and came running out. And of course, they saw a white person and they were touching me as though I was wet paint. It was amazing. They kept touching me like this. Yeah. And, and they were just beautiful, wonderful children. But after she left, I really didn't believe because sometimes people come and make promises and they go and they disappear. But uh, those days I didn't have any telephone or anything else. Then Anita wrote a letter to me saying that, uh, you know, I want to continue, come, I want to come back and I want to set up. I said, good. So I, told you, I told you to go ahead and buy the phone yeah. and I would raise the money because in those days you had to wait six years for a phone and pay so much money or three months and pay more money. I said, get it in three months. So I neither came back, a I strange woman, um, very bossy and pushy. So that's it. <laughs> you, I hope you didn't record that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're the first person that promised something that's actually delivered the goods.